Moving now to our health news. 2023 will mark three years since COVID-19 entered our lives, put us into lockdown and changed our reality. While a lot of advances were made this past year, Jesse Cohen shows us what worries experts when it comes to the future. Another year in the past, putting us further from the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. 2022 provided solutions and expanded answers. We've seen an evolution, not just in the virus itself, but in the way we think of COVID-19 as an illness and the way we treat it, the way we diagnose it and how we look forward to the new year. Chief Medical Officer at Swedish Medical Center in the Denver area, Dr. Jaya Kumar has been at the forefront of this virus since its inception. Now we have rapid sequencing of viral genomes. So any virus you see, you could sequence it, duplicate it, make a treatment or a vaccine against it. That is huge. She points to some of the biggest advances that were made in 2022. We saw new antiretroviral drugs come in like Paxlovid, which is a pill, which you can give as an outpatient. That is something Dr. Scott Joy, who has worked with many sick COVID patients in Colorado, says has kept patients out of the hospital. On a weekly basis, we're doing myself personally about six to 10 prescriptions of Paxlovid a week. And I think that I've yet to see a patient who's been admitted really in the last six months of 2022. The last year has also expanded experts' knowledge. For example, we are seeing an RSV or flu surge Things have become like a piece of cake for us. We know what to do. And we had our surge protocol ready in 30 minutes, while this would have taken us hours and hours of hard work two years ago. But while these successes are worth celebrating, both doctors say it's important to acknowledge the hurdles. I think one of the challenges moving forward after the pandemic is patients trust in the vaccine. I'm a little concerned that vaccines are just the tip of the iceberg. Then we're going to start getting questioning about data around cancer screenings and questioning about cholesterol medicines to reduce risk of heart attack and stroke. And healthcare staffing has become an issue too. I think the, the biggest challenge we have moving forward is really the workforce. That's gonna be a big challenge for us in the next year or two. These experts emphasize that people are still not caught up on necessary medical exams and screenings, which could lead to larger health complications if not taken care of. I do think we've held back and we are still seeing people come in with advanced stages of illnesses. We still see in the hospitals people who have postponed medical care. I think we need to do a lot of catching up in the next few years. In order to understand where we are going, it's crucial to pinpoint where we currently stand with COVID-19. The concept of never getting COVID is something that we need to get over. We could potentially enter into an endemic stage, but that'll take some time. An endemic st stage is where you see predictable surges like flu. The years to come will allow us to be more informed on the effects of the COVID-19 virus. We're still in the infancy stages of this pandemic, although it seems like it's been years, but long-term effects are still unknown. So the next few years will be building upon the technology, investing more in basic science research, and be better prepared for any more pandemics that we may see in future. In Denver, I'm Jesse Cohen reporting.